Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see the involute gear generation formation and we step by step process to draw the involute gear tooth profile. So here this is the involute gear generation profile. In this particularly whatever the profile which is coming outside the base circle that profile is called as the involute gear profile. And whatever the profile which is coming inside and outside the base circle, that type of profile is called as sacral tooth profile. So here now we are going to use rack as a cutter on the gear generation tooth profile. Now with the help of rack as a cutter, in this case now how to draw the gear tooth profile on the uh, pinion means either you can get the teeth profile of pinion or teeth profile of rack on the PCD circle or PCD paper which is pasted on the pinion. So now in this case here, if you see this is the disc, means this is a rack cutter apparatus in which this is the disc which is having some specific PCD and uh, particularly this will be the rack which will be having linear motion. So here pi into m will be the so distance traveled by the rack for the one revolution of the or for the one teeth uh, revolution for the pinion. So now in this case, if you uh, just want to plot the teeth on the paper here, first of all, you have to take this rack to the reference point. And then as this is a circular scale, means this is a circular uh, plate or circular disc, which is having certain PCD. So there will be number of divisions on this uh, circular disc will be 360 degree. Then here for your for each PCD, there will be certain distance linear displacement given by the apparatus means for two division or for one division of the revolution of the pinion by how much amount this rack should move. Now, for example, if your this pinion is this PCD pinion disc is moving in clockwise sense, then your rack will move from right to left and it is moving in anti-clockwise sense, then your pinion will move from left to right. But for plotting the teeth on the this paper, which is pasted on the PCD disc, we have to just rotate the disc in clockwise sense so that the rack will move from right to left. So in this bottom part, there will be linear divisions and on this circular scale, there will be circular divisions or angular divisions. So for each and every division, you have to rotate this disc and you have to also move this rack linearly in from right to left. And whatever the teeth profile they are coming on the paper, that teeth profile you have to plot with the help of the pencil. Okay. Now in the next slide, we will see the video, how to plot the teeth. So far we have seen that involutes can be used as gear teeth profiles, but how can we manufacture these profiles? Traditional metal cutting processes would prove time consuming expensive and error prone. Fortunately, there is a technique which is faster, cheaper and mathematically accurate. It uses an involute rack as a cutting tool. It forcefully engages with a gear blank, which is nothing but a metal disc on which we are trying to cut the gear as if it is already a gear. The rack then removes any material obstructing its way, thereby leaving only what is needed and that is our gear, freshly cut. Let us simulate that process here. Here is a gear blank or a metal disc, and this is the involute rack. We will be giving a step-by-step -step rotation to the gear blank, and we will be giving a proportionate translational motion to the rack. And whenever they overlap, we will be removing that area. So we start by first giving a rotation to the blank, so we select the blank about this center. We are going to move from here to here. Then we are going to copy the rack. So from here, we go one step ahead like this. And then finally, we are going to subtract from the blank, the copy of the rack. And we'll be repeating this process over and over again. So we rotate the blank, advance the rack cutter and make a cut. Again, we rotate the blank, advance the cutter and cut it. Rotate the blank, advance the rack cutter and cut. Now you'll notice that a 
curve is already taking a shape. It is really surprising that a straight tool like this rack cutter is creating a perfect curved involute. Let us take a closer look at the freshly cut teeth. Uh, this may look a little rough, and that is because we have been taking coarser cuts. But for a fine feed, this will be even smoother. Let's try that. Here is a somewhat simplified simulation of the process. So this is our gear plank and this is the rack cutter. And uh, instead of giving uh, one motion to uh, the blank and the other motion to the cutter, say rotation to the blank and translation to the cutter, we are going to give both the motions, rotation as well as translation to the rack cutter. So this is how it looks. The rack cutter is rotating as well as advancing and whatever is coming in its way, it is removing from the gear plank. So slowly you can notice the gear tooth taking shape. Once it's done, we can zoom in and take a closer look. So let's stop here. And let's take a look at some of these teeth we have just cut. There they are. So they're much smoother because uh, this time we had given a finer feed. There are a couple of improvements we can do to this process by way of saving time and space. Uh, for example, instead of using a single rack cutter, which we were advancing every time before taking the cut, we can make several copies of this. So we can have an array of rack cutters and uh, each element of this array, we can advance with an appropriate feed. So instead of using a single rack cutter, we'll use this rather bank of rack cutters, each given a certain feed, and they can all advance and take uh, their own cut. Uh, to save some space, we can take this array and wrap it around a cylindrical drum like this, and then it becomes a continuous cutting process. This is then called as a gear hob, and we will look at it in another video. Thank you.